The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Central Matsu, Alaska, on your new fire apparatus, job number 31124. Please utilize this job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start down at the front bumper area. First, on both right and left side, you'll find your electronic siren. Moving more toward the center, right and left side, you'll find dual air horns. Moving up onto the bumper, passenger side, you'll find your bell. Moving inward from that location, you'll find your first tubbed storage location for hose. Moving further to the right, you have dual upward facing attachment points or tow hooks. Also located in the center, an additional tubbed storage for hose. Moving to the very far right in the image, this is gonna be the driver's side a discharge port, and all the way on the driver's side front, you'll find your mechanical siren. Moving up onto the body itself, you'll find a right and left turn indicators. Moving inside of the headlight cluster, you'll find your low and high beam headlights. Moving just up from that location, you'll find emergency warning lights on these sides. In addition, on your seamless windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers. Moving to the outer edge, you'll find your mirrors, which are convexed and flat. And at the very top, you'll find your running lights. Let's take a look at these in a few close-up images. You can also see on the side of your bumper, you have an additional warning light. Moving to the first tubbed storage location. Looking at the center section, you'll also see the attached tow hooks located in the center on the bumper you'll find your central Matsu logo. Moving over to the driver's side, you'll find your shoreline inlet. On the top of the apparatus, you'll find a forward-facing LED floodlight. Let's go ahead and take a look at the very top of the aerial itself. Once again, you'll see the LED forward-facing flood. Moving up from that location, you'll find two floodlights located on the tip of the ladder. You'll also find your chainsaw scabbard on the tip. Moving all the way down, you'll find aerial controls and nozzle controls. At the very bottom, you'll find your automatic nozzle. Moving up to the very top right side of the apparatus ladder, you'll find the release to pin the waterway at a lower section. Generalized view here of the opposite side of the ladder and then an additional view here forward facing. Let's take a look at some close-ups here of the front cab. Starting first, your turn indicator and marker lights, headlights and emergency lights. Moving to the door itself, you'll find your department logo. Moving over to the driver's door, you'll find a side facing camera. You'll also find an emergency warning light and a marker indicating that your equipment is TAC-4 equipped. Moving up into the upper compartment, you'll find your air compressor for your air brakes. Moving up from that location, you'll also find your auto charger when plugged into shore power. Let's move down to the front section. First, I'd like to point out some warning labels. First of all, this is a warning label regarding standing or riding on the apparatus. There's also a warning label here regarding pressurized caps and associated hazards while under pressure. An additional warning label here not to mix foam types. As we move to the far left, you'll find a two and a half inch discharge port. Just beneath that, you'll find an additional two and a half inch discharge port. Moving up from that location, you'll find your override Moving just down from that location, you'll find your air auto eject. Just to the right, you'll find a twist. This is gonna be your drain. 
Let's go ahead and move all the way over to the other side, just below the large diameter intake. You'll find an auxiliary inlet, two and a half inch. Moving further to the right, you'll find the lever for your CAFS system outlet. Moving all the way down to the bottom, you'll find additional drains across the bottom. Let's take a look at some close-ups here. Once again, number one, driver's side discharge. Number three, driver's side discharge. Your air inlet and also your manifold drain. That's a twist, not a pull. As we move to the very bottom, you'll find all your associated drains. Moving further up, you'll find your driver's side inlet. Moving just up from that location, we're highlighting the warning labels here. Also just beneath the warning label, you'll find your auxiliary foam instructions for foam inlet strainer. Moving now just up from that location, another additional warning label behind this compartment. This is for possible entanglement because hoses come off of this location. You also have some discharges and also a quick release. We'll cover these in more detail in the next set of images. Let's move back to the body itself. Underneath, you'll find an additional step. This is a pull out and fold out. There are two levers to activate that. Also underneath, you'll find your folding wheel chocks. Underneath from that location, this is the ground stabilizer. Moving up onto the actual stabilizer itself, you'll find an emergency warning light. And then just underneath that emergency warning light, you'll also find a warning label here regarding the possibility of crush hazard. This does move and it is, needs to be aware that there could be potential crush hazards. You'll also find an electrical hazard here regarding the aerial ladder being entangled in electrical lines. At the very top, you'll find your camera and also light for your outriggers. On the side, you'll find an additional side facing floodlight. We're now back to the apparatus compartment here where your panel is located. We're going to go through some of those panel identifiers. There's three panel breakdowns here. I should say four, the very top section, the lower section, and then also all your electronic valves and at the very bottom, all of your drain valves. We'll cover those individually next. Let's first start in the upper left-hand corner, or the very first arrow we indicated in the green section here. You're going to find first a warning for your CAFS system, and you'll also find in green the foam tank itself. This is your foam tank A level indicator. Moving into the blue section, you're going to find a caution. Your aerial PTO must be engaged prior to using your CAFS to operate. And you'll also find the CAFS system here for your compressor in blue and a high oil temperature indicator. Moving to the right in red, you'll find your foam system. This is your Pierce foam system. That's the control module for controlling the amount of foam. Moving to the left to right, you'll find your pump intake and then your pump discharge. These are the two master gauges at the very top. Located in between, you'll find your vacuum and pressure. These are your test ports. Moving in the upper right-hand corner, you'll find your PCM fault. Just beneath that, that is an amber indicator. Just beneath that, you'll find an audible speaker. This does have the ability to control that. And then underneath at the very bottom section, you'll find your pump overheat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, cross lays here in addition with discharges. First, starting from left to right, you'll find your front foam, number one cross lay, number two, the two and a half, driver's side and aerial discharge. On the very far right, you'll find your Pierce governor. And to the very far right, you'll find your maintenance schedule and also a warning here that only trained personnel should operate this. Let's start with your minimum operation schedule. This is going to be your test pressures 150, 200, and 250 PSI, and the associated GPM and RPM. Moving down from that, or I should say just on the opposite side, you'll find your hydraulic sensor for your oil temperature, yellow indicating warning temp, red flashing critical temp, and yellow red alternating, you have a sensor air. Just beneath that, you'll find your running lights, spare, compartment heater, and also spare or future locations for switches. And let's go ahead and cover some of the additional gauges here. In this section, you'll find most of your electronic switches. First, these are going to be to activate your CAFS system. They are sequentially located across the top, in addition with your compartment pump heater. Moving down to the left, you'll find your tank fill. And then as we move all the way across the various types of electronic valves, you'll find these are all of your Akron valves and also your direct fill switches. In the very far right in red, you'll find your air horn, push to activate. 
and to the very far right you'll find instructions here regarding priming instructions that you need to be at least 1000 RPMs for activating your fire pump primer. Just beneath that you'll find a twist. This is your recirculating line, not a pull. And once again, down below all of your Akron electronic valves. Further down you'll find a set of switches here regarding your nozzles. And as we move all the way to the very far right, this is your panel gauge heater. This is an automatic Moving down to the very bottom, this is going to be all your associated drains. Some of them are lift and some of them are twist. For example, the manifold drain is going to be a twist, not a pull. And all of the individuals across the very bottom, those are all going to be a lift to drain. Once again, additional danger label regarding electricity and hazards associated with your aerial device. In this access door, we'll talk about your foam leveler. As we look inside, it's got instructions on the door itself. Once we access inside, We'll take a look and see that you have a yellow handle indicating the position here coincides with outside the door. Also beneath that you'll find your manual pump shift override, a protected switch, and also an amber light when it's activated. Moving up to the next compartment, we'll start at the very top of the compartment, upper left. Let's first start with your G1, which stands for your generator. This is the breaker panel and also a warning label here regarding electrical shock. The very top you'll find your continuous power supply rating. This is in the yellow for your Harrison 6KW generator. These are the breaker switches here for G1, once again stands for generator. This is the next panel over which is S1, stands for shore power. And As we look to the very top you'll find your amps for line 1 and 2 and also the mode in which your Harrison generator is operating. You have uh, toolbox storage down at the very bottom and additional storage on the far right. As we look here, this is going to be your battery charger. You have a radio controls enable. This is the remote for your stream and also your ladder controls for remote operation. As we look underneath the apparatus, once again, folding wheel chocks are located here. Let's take a look in the compartments. Just in the very center, you'll find two additional warning and danger labels here. And as we move through these compartments, first compartment is going to be a 4.5 US gallon DEF tank. It is a blue cap. Moving further over, you'll find two SCBA bottles and straps can be stored in this location. Same with just to the rear of the apparatus wheel, you'll find an additional SCBA storage location. Just down from this, you'll find your diesel fuel only. This is going to be ultra low sulfur and it is a silver cap. Let's go ahead and take a look overhead. This is where your outrigger comes out. This is a light for illuminating the location and also a camera for position. We'll move now next to the rear compartment. Starting in the rear compartment, you have a tool board here. Once this is latched open, there is a rocker inside that will allow it to lock in position. And at the very bottom, you'll find the storage location for your outrigger pads. Moving in between the ladder, you'll find your hydraulic oil level indicator and also at the very top a light in addition with the front to back level indicator from 0 degrees to 15 degrees. At the very bottom you'll find your ladder stowed sensor. Generalized view here of the driver's side of your apparatus. We're now going to move to the very rear section of the apparatus. We'll first start with some of the switches. First you have your stabilizer pad lights on. Those are the lights that are at the top of the apparatus shining down for your stabilizer location. In the upper left hand corner, once again hose comes off this section, there is a possibility for entanglement. In the first compartment you'll find your ground ladders located here in addition with long pike pole storage and also a folding ladder. As we look for your diagnostic control, override, hydraulic emergency power, these are going to be for your stabilizer controls and you can see the green indicator light indicating the location of all of your stabilizers are currently operational when they are stowed in all green. Or stabilized in the downward position appropriately. The three switches here are for your override, emergency hydraulic power, and once you have your level assist activated, once you have your pads down, you'll switch that lever to help assist in leveling your apparatus. The next section down is the driver side stabilizer. The very bottom is the rear stabilizer control. Let's go ahead and take a look just down from that location. You'll find your generator outlet. This is a 20 amp when your generator is activated. This will have power for you. As we look at this set you'll find a control panel here behind the Pierce logo. You'll also find once again an additional warning label regarding pressurized caps in this location. This is your aerial inlet, large diameter. Moving all the way over to the 
center of the apparatus behind this access door is your aerial drain. Moving just to the right, you'll find a 0 to 15 degree right to left or side to side indicator. Just beneath that, you'll find your calf's aerial drain. This is a twist, not a pull. Let's go ahead and take a look into the access door. This is once again your aerial drain. As we look on the outside, this is going to be your pressure indicator for your large diameter intake and also just above that, 0 to 15 degree on your right to left stabilization. Generate an outlet located here in yellow. And as we move to the center compartment, you'll find an adjustable shelf that's currently in a fixed position. Let's take a look in the access door here. First, danger and warning labels here regarding electrical entanglement and also tip possibility for a hazard. As we look to the very far right of this control area section, you'll find your aerial emergency power and your stabilizer emergency power selector switch. On the very far right side, you're going to find additional ground ladders located here. And as we look, this is your right side. This is going to be your passenger side stabilizer. You have the same functions as the other side. General view of the rear section of your apparatus. We'll go ahead and start at the rear at the very top. Let's first start with your traffic advisor located across the middle section here in the rear. And then just above that traffic advisor, you'll find your backup or reverse camera. We're going to go to the passenger side of the vehicle now. This is the right side. We're going to see same configuration for the most part on this side in addition with your steps and also storage locations. This side is equipped also with the bottle storage location with straps both in front and rear of the tire. As we move to the center section you'll find a toolbar at the very top and then you'll also find an additional stabilizer information here regarding warning and crush and also a danger label here regarding electrocution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the top as you do on the other side. This is your light and also your camera for visualization for your stabilizers. On the side of the apparatus, you'll have two LED side facing floodlights, one in the rear and also one about midship. Let's move to the next compartment forward. Similar to where the LED light is, you'll find a two shelf compartment adjustable. As we move forward at that location, this is going to be your electrical reel compartment comes down from the very top. As you can see here, there's also an additional plug-in breaker. And in the upper right-hand corner, you'll find your Shoreline outlet. This is a 15 amp plug. Down at the very bottom, you'll find the Cord Reel Rewind. This is a 200 foot 20 amp. We're now at the pump panel on the passenger side. Quick warning label here regarding falling off of the apparatus while in motion. And also a warning label regarding pressurized caps and the associated hazards when opening. You also have your water strainer behind this cap. As we move all the way uh, to the center, you're going to find your large diameter intake. Just above that, you'll find your override due to the electric valves. This is the override for that. Down at the very left hand side, you'll find an additional drain. Just a reminder, these are twist knot pulls. And then also located is your auxiliary two and a half inch inlet. Let's move all the way over to the right side. You'll find the passenger side two and a half inch discharge. This is in orange and just beneath that you'll find the override because this is an electronic valve. Moving down, large diameter discharge and also it's in green. Passenger side large diameter, you also have an override. As we move to the very bottom, these are all going to be levers for your drains and they are labeled individually. And I have some close-ups of those areas that we just talked about. First, in the upper left, your water strainer. Moving down from this location, you'll find your water strainer drain and two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. And then here are the associated drains at the very bottom. Upper right-hand corner, you're going to find your large diameter discharge and also a passenger side discharge. We're now moved inside the cab. You have three forward-facing seats in the rear. These are all SCBA style seats. Located in the doghouse, you'll find access for oil and transmission checks. As we look inside the cab at all points of entry for the doors, you'll find a warning label here regarding the use of seat belts. This is going to be just outside on the passenger side. As we look inside this compartment, you'll find an additional when you're plugged into shore power. This is going to be a 15 amp shore power outlet. As we move to the outside passenger side, you'll find a side facing camera. You also have emergency warning light just beneath that. 
We're now in the cab passenger section. A vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, airbag, and there's also an instructions here to keep that area clear. That's a warning label. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the very bottom foot area. This is going to be the mechanical siren on the right foot. As we move to the left, this will be your air horn. These are both momentary switches. Moving up from that location, you'll find a crossbar for comfort and also your windshield wiper fluid adding location. At all points of entry, you'll find your warning labels regarding the use of seatbelts. As we look on the cab itself inside, you'll find a USB style 12 volt and just beneath that two barrel style 12 volt. Located in the center here, you're going to find your push to talk for your radio system. You have a push button bell and then to the right, you have a speedometer digital readout. Located between the passenger and driver, you'll find access here for map books and additional cab resources. Looking overhead in this area, you'll find your David Clark headset system, push on and off red and white lights. In addition with all of your components across the front section, we'll first start with your radio system. This is your Panasonic Weatherband Sirius XM MP3 and CD player. You also have some switches here. Let's cover those. Front flood, moose light, driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, aerial tip lights, perimeter lights, and a siren brake. Once they've been pushed, they will illuminate. Let's move to the driver's side. Let's start with a couple of the warning labels here. Starting on the left door, you'll find once again seat belt and additional warning labels here. What I would like to direct your attention to also is the Pierce placard at the very bottom section in the yellow. Let's start by identifying first. It has your information here regarding the date of manufacture, job number, it also has information here for tire pressures and your VIN number, and you have an additional manufacturer by Pierce information placard here that has additional information. Down at the step wheel, you'll find your auto charger status. This is when plugged into shore power. On the left, you'll find your mechanical siren at foot location. Let's go ahead and move up to about the left knee location. First quarter turn battery switch in silver, your tech module, and also your engine transmission ABS diagnostic port. Moving up to the top, you'll find your aerial master, aerial calf's PTO, generator PTO, run lights, stabilizer camera, and also your stabilizer locator lights. Also two future switches. Moving up, you've got your stationary okay to pump or rolling indicator, your water pump, foam system, calf's, and also your TTP valve open and close. Let's go ahead and move to the dash area, left hand side. First, let's start with your ignition and start switch. Moving over to the right, small section of the panel here, you have your headlight control and also your panel rocker switch for dimming and brightening and also your EM emergency master switch. On the right side, you'll find your high idle. This is the switch for OK to engage the high idle. Let's cover the dash components with transmission, oil, DEF, and water temps on the left. In the center, your tachometer and speedometer. Moving to the right, your volts, fuel, front air, and rear air. You also have informational displays above the speedometer and below. Let's move just to the right of this location and see a generalized view here of the front dash area. Let's go ahead and start down at the lower section of this area. First with your main mirror and your convex mirror. This is the right and left mirror controls. Moving to the left, you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. As we move to the right of that, you'll find your Allison transmission pad, which is a digital readout and also an indicator to pump in neutral. Up from that location, we'll start with your engine brake. It's an on-off switch. Your engine brake settings for low, medium, and high. A mirror heat, off-road traction, and front wheel like. And a protected switch here, which is your tire chains. In the center, you'll find your informational display. Moving to the right, you'll find your push for windshield wiper fluid. And also your control, which is a rotate for on and off and speeds. Located in the center, you'll find your climate control. Moving overhead, you'll find this placard for height 11 feet 8 inches, length 39.5 inches, gross vehicle weight rating at 28.75 tons. Let's go overhead just to the right of this location. We'll start with your emergency master, your opticom. You have handrails, air horn, bell, an engine fan, big dipper, and load manager. Front flood, moose light, driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, aerial tip lights, perimeter lights, and siren brake. Further to the right, this is gonna be your unit radio. 
Moving to the right, this is going to be your traffic direction, which is your traffic advisor. You have left, right, split, and flash. And located in the center, you'll find your PA system and siren control. Looking in the very center, you'll find this round style light. It's indicated in red. This is an indicator that you have doors open or a compartment open. It will flash in red. Let's move to the aerial. On the right hand side, we're at the rear section of the aerial. The piece of tape here indicates your length when the ladder is extended. Moving to the pedestal at the very top in white, this is your communication speaker. Moving down to the lower right corner, this is going to be some warning and hazard labels. And then moving to the left, black round, this is going to be an audible speaker. Let's move to the section when the compartment has been opened. First, we'll start with some warning labels here and some danger labels. All the way to the far left are also going to be all of your aerial uh, limitations for while flowing water or not flowing water and also weight capacities. Moving on the upper left hand corner, first your emergency stop push. This is also going to be the location just beneath that for your tip lights, tracking lights, the aerial speed, whether it's normal or fast. You also have ladder illumination and your remote aerial control activation, which is a protected switch, emergency hydraulic power. This is broken into two categories. First, nozzle control on the left hand side and then ladder control on the right for extend, retract, left and right and lower and raise. Just in front of the pedestal is where you're going to find your intercom system. Let's take a look at the lid once again. These are the information here on your ascendant aerial for waterway dry, waterway charged, and also your monitor nozzle positions. On the left side of the ladder at the base, you'll find this light and also your degrees from 0 to 80. Located in the first drop down door, you'll find additional information here regarding calibration and aerial controls. At the base of the ladder, looks like a step, but it's actually going to be storage location. On the right hand side of the aerial, you'll also have an additional storage location here. Moving to the tip itself, we have a lot of controls here. Let's go over some of those controls starting at the very section underneath. You'll find your stream right and left, fog or straight, and also your raise and lower. That was for your nozzle control. On the right side, you'll find your intercom system and also a 15 amp generated power. To the left, you'll find your pierce control here for raise and lower, rotate and extend tip lights and stop control. Underneath the ladder you'll find the location of your generator. Moving forward of that location you'll find your water fill location and also your tank A fill. Congratulations Central Matsu, Alaska on your new apparatus job number 31124. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video or further questions about your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales representative. Congratulations and good luck.